Luciano Ligio was an important Italian mafioso linked to the Corleonese clan. Ligio became known to the general public with the Maxi Trial of Palermo, which brought around 500 mafiosi, corrupt public officials, and hitmen to answer for their actions. Ligio was a big shot, a capable but violent boss, so much so that he was nicknamed Cocciu e Tacca, which means grain of fire. His criminal career was studded with murders, massacres, and escapes that were only interrupted by his final arrest and sentence in prison. But prison for him was never a real issue because even from behind bars, he continued to play his role as a leader and to commission his loyal followers to commit various murders. Luciano was born in 1925 in Corleone. His family was humble and large, but young Luciano proved from the beginning to be smart and flexible. The relationship with a mafioso called Uzio Luca allowed him to enter the Cosca, which was the name of the local gangs, when he was very young and start committing small-scale crimes. He was arrested for the first time in 1944, when he was caught red-handed by the field guards while he was stealing sheaves of wheat from the stubble. The young man got off because he was pardoned, but he didn't forget what happened. And in 1945, the security guard who had denounced him, Calogero Comagiani, was killed. In these first years of criminality, Luciano is known with his real last name, Legio. Only later will he adopt Ligio, which was actually a transcription error by a brigadier. In an interview undertaken by Enzo Biaggi, the mafioso revealed that the wrong surname became his artistic name. And so Luciano worked his way up to become the right-hand man of the boss Michele Navarra. Navarra in the 50s was the undisputed boss of the territory. Doctor and hospital director, this boss had succeeded in getting rid of his competition, thanks to Ligio, who probably had his rival Rizzotto killed or killed him himself as he was found hanging from the grating of the municipal villa during a fight. Navarra was, however, a traditionalist boss and couldn't contain Ligio's ambitions and desire for power for long. The young mafioso, in fact, had realised that he'd had enough ability to do more, to obtain more power and not remain a simple lieutenant of a boss who had no desire to expand further. The tensions between the boss of Corleone and his subordinate came to a climax with a project to build a dam. Luciano had begun to create a network of loyalists and had become interested in more illegal activities, starting with the theft and slaughter of stolen livestock. In order to hide these operations, he decided to set up a trucking company and became interested in a dam project. Navarra didn't take well to Ligio's initiative because he didn't want the dam, the presence of which would have reduced his power and influence on the territory. As it turned out, the boss of Corleone in fact had control of all the local wells. Luciano did not back down because he had enough autonomy and security to take on his boss. When it came to it, he decided not to hit him personally, but to damage an associate of Navarra, namely Vintaloro. The boss of Corleone reacted with firmness and ferocity and sent his armed men to deal with his former right-hand man. Luciano managed to save himself, but did end up wounded. Luciano reacted promptly and organized the murder of the boss. Seven killers collaborated with him, and on the 2nd of August, 1958, they made an attempt on Navarra's life, riddling his car with rounds from machine guns and automatic pistols. The mafioso was returning to Corleone from a nearby town, and with him was a young, innocent doctor who was extraneous to the organisation. Of the 127 shots fired, 90 were found in the body of the boss. A couple of days later, all of Corleone attended Navarra's funeral, but by now, power had changed hands. The new boss is Legio. Together with his companions Provenzano and Raina, he doesn't sit idly by and immediately takes action to cleanse the territory of the old boss's loyalists. Luciano carried out a veritable butchery that culminated in the massacre of the Bastioni San Rocco. In five years, he succeeded in eliminating around 58 of Navarra's followers. Even neutrals were not spared. The new chief adopted the system of the White Lupara, for which the corpses were made to disappear in various ways and were never found. 
In the meantime, the criminal activities continued to evolve. The new boss became interested in extortion, in gambling circles and in the grain market. Soon the small town of Corleone welcomed more and more significant trafficking. Thanks to his success, he managed to land in Palermo, and there he formed an alliance with Greco. But in these years, the first mafia war breaks out. The Corleonesi remained mainly neutral, but Ligio, however, became a wanted man by the police. Ligio was arrested in May of 1964 and subsequently hit with two prison sentences. But the power of Ligio and the Corleonesi manifested itself with all its strength, even in the courtroom. A striking example was a trial held in Bari for nine murders and criminal association. The sentence seemed clear and inevitable. Yet during the hearing, the judges received a letter warning them of the dangers of going against the Corleonesi. After reading it in silence, they acquitted the boss and his men. After the acquittal, the Palermo police headquarters set up a special surveillance over the boss, but Leggio became aware and once again escaped the long arm of the law. Now wanted by Interpol, Leggio was disappeared from the radar for a while. He actually settled in Milan, where he continued his trafficking for years. In particular, he dealt with kidnappings. But it was this activity that finally betrayed him, and he was finally arrested for the last time. Luciano Ligio was present at the Maxi trial of Palermo. He intervened only once, asking for a confrontation with Buscetta. Now, Buscetta, in his revelations to justice, declared that Ligio's arrest had not been an accident, but the result of the betrayal of Raina, the boss's loyalist. In fact, Ligio, to maintain a balance in the organization, had ousted Raina from the commission. Unsurprisingly, the latter clearly didn't take the decision well. Buscetta also pointed out that the day of Leggio's arrest coincided with the day of the wedding between Raina and Ninetta Bagarella. Perhaps this was no coincidence. The boss was sentenced to 22 years in prison, and it was in prison that he finally did meet his own end. He did in fact die of a heart attack in the Sardinian prison of Badu e Caros on November the 15th, 1993. So there you have it, another towering, ruthless character in this intriguing story of organised crime. Do keep watching the channel, do keep your comments coming, we do love to read them. And we do have loads more fascinating videos of characters like Leggio coming up. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.